Theoretical Physics with Dr. Fizz, a derivation of the Schrodinger equation. Well, almost. Here you have the equation that describes the oscillations of the harmonics on a string between two walls. And we, at that point, we fitted the wavelength so that n half waves were set equal to L and that means the 2 comes up here, the n goes down there, and you get the quantization of the wavelength, which quantizes the momentum via de Broglie, which quantizes the energy. I want to look at these two equations, the de Broglie relation and the corresponding equation for the energy, say so if p equals h over lambda and e is h times f, and I want to express these in terms of h bar. Here's the neat way to do it. You have here k, the wave number is 2 pi over lambda. So 1 over lambda, 1 over lambda is k over 2 pi. So if I replace 1 over lambda with k over 2 pi, I get the momentum is h bar k. That's cool. And then for the energy, if I multiply by 2 pi and divide by 2 pi, then h over 2 pi is h bar, and 2 pi f is what we call the angular frequency. So we get this nice pair of equations, E equals h bar mega and P is h bar k. Now the condition for the kinetic energy is that the energy E is equal to P squared over 2m, so h bar omega equals P squared h bar squared k squared over 2m, and that's the equation that needs to be true when I have my differential equation for which this is the solution. So we start hunting for a differential equation. We did this before when we were in search for the wave equation. We started taking derivatives. A differential equation has derivatives, so let's go with taking derivatives. And we start with taking a derivative here with respect to x twice because we see k is squared. If k is squared, we know with sines and cosines, if you take the derivative twice, you get the same thing back with this uh, factor here, squared. For example, the cosine of kx with a k in front is your derivative of sine of kx. So taking the derivative of sine of kx with respect to x once gives you the uh, cosine of kx with k in front. And then if you take the derivative of the cosine, you get minus the sine, k comes out again, so you get minus k squared times the sine kx, which is the same thing back. That's very, very important. When I try to do the same trick with the omega, I only have one power of omega. So I go for one derivative, one derivative, pull omega out once, and this is the derivative, gonna, it's gonna be negative omega sine of omega t, the derivative of cosine is negative of the sine, and I have a big problem. The big problem is I didn't get the same thing back. I wanted to get the same thing back so I can doctor up these things with constants and set them equal, and I can't do that because I don't see the psi here. Well, this talk, uh, here presentation could also be called why we need the imaginary number in quantum mechanics because you're going to see why in a second via Euler we need to have the same thing come back when you take one derivative and to make that work we'd like to have e to the minus i omega t then you can pull down the minus i omega and get the same thing back I'm going to use the minus i omega t because the convention is in quantum mechanics to have the e to the i k x and minus i k x here when you promote the sine k x to an exponential they like to have these change sign and keep the time the same with the minus sign so when you have k x minus omega t this e to the plus i k x represents a wave going to the right and e to the minus i k x represents a wave going to the left because you have the same sign with the uh, kx and the omega t. Uh, this kind of trick where you promote uh, trigonometric functions to exponentials via the Euler relation, because the Euler relation, you know, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta, that trick is done in engineering often since it's easier to work with exponentials and then you may take the real part like in the end uh, to get back your your solution or what you're looking for so this is nothing new to do this kind of a promotion and we do it here to save us because we need to have the derivative to bring us the same thing back again so once we have that we're ready to go we can make this work here for example h bar omega can come back here with the first derivative respect to time if I hit this with i h bar I need to hit it with i so that i times minus i is plus one 
I need to hit it with h bar so h bar can couple with the omega to give me h bar omega and the same thing back. For the h bar squared k squared over 2m I need to hit this with a minus sign so I can clean up this uh, sign here get this plus and then I hit it with an h bar squared so h bar squared with the uh, k squared gives me uh, part of the setup the numerator and then if I divide by 2m I then have it so this gets the job done I can set them equal then because these have to be equal the h bar omega that you get here has to equal h bar squared k squared over 2m and because I got the same thing back on the derivatives I can set this equal and I get a differential equation this is the Schrodinger equation one dimension where the potential energy is zero if you want to have potential energy then you add that to the kinetic energy and the equation is modified by adding the potential energy times the wave function the psi and this is the f equals ma of quantum mechanics for the case where the potential does not vary with respect to time you expect this kind of solution and you can actually replace this with an f of t and use the differential equation approach where you uh, have separation of variables and you will find that indeed you get this I'm just gonna uh, show you that this does indeed work if we plug this in to the uh, equation the differential equation we take the derivative with respect to t of the wave function and here we take the second derivative with respect to with respect to x of the wave function and here we just put the wave function uh, down well the psi of x is independent of the t so you can pull it out so we pull that out here and the derivative with respect to t brings a minus i omega down here you can just pull the e to the uh, minus i omega t out and let the second derivative work on the psi of x as a regular derivative here and we have the e to the minus i omega t here notice that e to the minus i omega t is never zero if t is equal to zero you have e to the zero that's a one when you have e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta you never can have the cosine sine being zero simultaneously so it's always non-zero so in that case I'll be cavalier and just divide both sides of the equation by e to the minus i omega t get rid of it and I have this equation here and notice that minus i omega times i h bar is h bar omega as expected our energy and this is the Schrodinger equation in one dimension for the time independent potential so here we go the time independent Schrodinger equation I wrote here the energy on the right hand side and if you want the time dependent case you simply go back to what we had earlier i h bar the partial with respect to t and these are the equations in one dimension often you know the potential energy is going to be independent of the time so we simply go with this one and for 3d for 3d we bring in the Laplacian so we have each of the three dimensions you can think of this as the momentum in the x direction and this is the energy that's going to you know p square over 2m is going to come from this second derivative and then for the y direction and for the z direction so you simply replace the derivative uh, which you had earlier with, with the spatial component x with the Laplacian notice that this makes perfect sense because momentum is a vector and the total momentum is px squared plus py squared plus bz squared and since the px squared one gave us a partial derivative with respect to x then the y will likewise give a similar term and a similar term so we then simply add the three partial derivatives and that's our Schrodinger equation in three dimensions and here's a neat little thing you should remember a uh, neat thing here is that you can get the Schrodinger equation very quickly by these uh, assignments I h bar d dt is your energy sometimes that's called the energy operator and the momentum is uh, replaced classical momentum replaced with this minus i h bar del uh, don't worry about that minus sign right now just take that uh, on on faith that that that's that's the cool way to do it so these are your operators classical energy goes to an operator classical momentum goes to an operator and when you do this and then uh, write like p squared over 2m you interpret that as uh, simply uh, squaring the operator well what you mean is you mean a Laplacian when you have the p squared you have the root you just mean take 
the derivative twice. And then when you do that, you will get the Schrodinger equation. A neat little trick here to remember these operator rules.